Hi everyone, this is Shreyank Siddharth and welcome to my course. In this course, I will give you a big picture of how Firebase is helpful in context of an anode application. The purpose of this course is not to dive deeper into the Firebase technology, but I will show you all the Firebase products that will help you to speed up the process of Android development. So this course has been divided into three sections. In the first section, I will show you all the Firebase products using which you can speed up your app development process. And once you create your application, I will show you all the Firebase products using which you can improve your app's performance. And of course, in the last section, I will show you all the Firebase products which will help you to increase the user engagement and therefore how you can earn money out of your application. And once we cover all the Firebase products, then I will show you how to integrate Firebase into your project. And also I will show you how does Firebase console looks like using which you can monitor all your Firebase products that you have integrated in your application. So after we have covered all of these things, I will show you popular brands in the world that are currently using Firebase in their own application. For example, Hotstar, Spotify, Google Photos, Fabulous, they are all using some way or the other the Firebase products for their own success, right? So I will give you an idea of how Firebase has played a role in their product success. So before you start this video, please subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up. Enjoy. Now before we start our journey, let us get a glimpse of a short history of Firebase. So back in 2011, there was a startup named Envolve. Well, this startup provided an API which allowed developers to integrate chat functionality into their website. But in reality, these APIs were so efficient that instead of creating chat applications, developers were using them to sync application data in real time with the server. So looking at this, founders of Envolve decided to establish another company known as Firebase, which was launched in 2012. Well, initially, Firebase provided only real-time database, which was used to store data in the cloud and sync that data across multiple platforms. But soon, in 2014, Firebase was acquired by Google. And then, of course, rest is history. Ever since then, Firebase provided all-round solutions to each problem that developer faces in the real world. And since it is backed by Google, so you can use them in your application without any hesitation or having trust issues. So today, Firebase gives you tools to develop high-quality applications, grow your user base, and therefore earn more money. Now the question arises, why should you use Firebase for Android? Why not continue to develop applications like we traditionally do? Well, the answer to this lies in the most common challenges that developers face while developing their applications. Let us explore a few of the major challenges. Well, adding authentication systems such as Facebook login, Google sign in one by one is a huge headache for developers. Maintaining and scaling a database in your backend server is not always economical. In fact, most of the time it is resource intensive. Additionally, if you have hosted the database in your own server, then making sure your server runs 24-7 is yet another biggest challenge. Of course, Android has a wide range of devices in the market, each with different configurations and types. So, once you create your application, you must test it on as much devices as you can, which practically sounds impossible, right? But with Firebase, it can be done with a couple of clicks. Next, integrations with products and services like Slack, AdMob, Analytics, BigQuery, and so on is yet another challenge that a developer faces. In fact, there are hundreds of more challenges that you might face without using Firebase but I have highlighted the most important ones over here. 
But the good thing is the solution to the most of these problems lies in the product backed by Google known as Firebase. So Firebase offers a large number of products and services. So based on their functionalities, I have divided them into three categories. Well, the first group of features will help you build a robust and high quality Android application. Basically using these products, you can develop your application. Then once you have built your application, you can use Firebase feature to improve its quality and therefore improve its performance. In short, using this group of products, you can easily maintain your application. Lastly, we create apps to, of course, earn some money, right? So the last group of features will help you to expand your business and therefore earn more money. So let us start discussing about different Firebase products. Let us start with how to create high quality applications using Firebase. Under this section, you will get to know various Firebase products which you can use to develop your application. So let us take a look at the list of products that Firebase offers for this purpose. So the first product is the authentication, which will help you to authenticate your application users. Then we have Cloud Firestore and Real-Time Database. Well, these two are Firebase databases which are used to store data of course. We will explore both of them and also understand the basic differences between them. Next we have cloud storage, which is basically meant to store any type of file such as photos, videos, GIFs and so on. And finally we will explore Firebase cloud functions, which provides a serverless backend experience to developers. Now don't worry, we will explore each one of these features one by one. So let us start with the first one, that is authentication. So what is Firebase authentication and what problem does it solve? Well, authentication is basically a way to verify the user and nothing else. So Firebase authentication provides you with different ways to verify the application user. Let us take a look at them. So the first way you can authenticate a user is by simply using his email and password. And of course, this is the most traditional approach, but it is still being used by most applications even today. The second way is by login integration from applications like Facebook, Google, Twitter, Yahoo, Microsoft, and even GitHub. Well, Firebase authentication supports all of them. You can even ask the user to log in using his phone number or email. And then you can auto verify the phone number by sending an SMS or a verifiable link to his email ID. And this method of user authentication is quite trending these days. Sounds amazing, isn't it? Now, if you have your own authentication system present in your own backend server, then you can even use that to authenticate the user, generate an auth token, and therefore use that token to authenticate the user with Firebase. Lastly, you can authenticate the user anonymously as well. This means the user might not sign in immediately. But you can allow the user to use the application with or without having access to all the application features. Fine. And of course, later you can prompt that user to sign in in order to access other application features. So these were different ways the Firebase offers you to authenticate your user. Now, what about the user interface? That is the layouts and the UI flows. So here comes the next challenge for the developers. It is quite challenging for developers to design layouts for sign-in or sign-up screens, reset password screens, and so on. Furthermore, writing code logic, 
handling stability issues are another aspect of challenges for the developers. Apart from this, adding Facebook login or any other social media login one by one is very very time taking. But don't worry, Firebase authentication has even solution for that. So for this, Firebase provides you with two options. The first one is by using Firebase Authentication SDK. And the second is by using a library known as Firebase UI, which is built on top of Firebase Authentication SDK, which is our first option over here, right? So you can use any of these two options, but this Firebase UI library is the recommended approach. So let's see why this option is recommended by Google. Well, if you use this library, then you have to write almost no code to create the UI and implement the authentication flow in your application. Because this library already contains almost everything which you need to implement authentication in your application. In short, it contains all the necessary layouts and code for your application. You just need to put them to use and that's it. Even it provides the UI flows for Facebook, Google, Twitter and other logins. Additionally, this library provides you with the flexibility to customize its looks so that it can match with your brand colors. Fine. Overall, you can assume it's a complete package for your application. So, that is why this library Firebase UI is the recommended option. Of course, you can also go for the manual integration using Firebase Auth SDK. But it will take a lot of your time and effort. But in the end, choice is always yours. So yes, that's all for Firebase Authentication. Now moving on, the next Firebase product that I want to talk about is the Cloud Firestore. So what exactly is Cloud Firestore? Well, it is basically a database to store data. So before we dive into it, let us take a look at what problem does it solve. So for any application, you will need to set up a database in your backend server so that you can store data into it, right? But setting up your own database is not so easy. To set up your database, first you would need a backend server where you would set up your database. Then you need to implement features like real time sync, offline support, and find ways to secure the database. Moreover, you will need a lot of time and money and effort to establish all these things. Sounds like a big pain, isn't it? So here comes Cloud Firestore to the rescue. Well, Cloud Firestore is basically a cloud hosted NoSQL database. Since it is NoSQL, it doesn't contain any rows, any columns or event tables. So the data is basically stored in documents. And these documents are further organized into collections. Feeling confused? Let me throw some light on it. So, in Firestore, we basically store data in a document. And each document is given a name, such as user2 in our case. And within this document, we store data in the form of key value pairs. Now, similar to this document, we can have more documents in the database in the same hierarchy, like this. And similar documents can be grouped together into a collection. So right now in front of you, we have a collection of users. Now moving on, each document can further point to another collection. For example, Suppose we have this collection of documents. So this document over here can further point to a sub collection like this. And the same document can point to multiple collections like this. 
and the root of the cloud fire store can only consist of collections which means this firebase root can point to multiple collections and of course the documents present in those collections can further point to sub collections as per the requirement so right now in front of you is the big picture of how data is organized in a big tree like structure now the major advantage of using cloud firestore is that it can synchronize data in real time automatically and also if you wish to fetch data one time then you can even do that if your database becomes huge then it scales automatically so you really don't have to worry about its maintenance now if your device is offline then it will automatically cache data locally and when the device comes online it will sync the data with the firestore database automatically in the background for me it sounds like a perfect database option for android developers isn't it so to conclude cloud firestore provides you with a complete database solution that an android developer craves for and you must give it a try for your application i am sure you will love it so yes that's all for cloud firestore at this moment now moving on let's take a look at what is real time database so similar to firestore firebase offers one more database known as firebase real time database well this database is firebase original database that is even before cloud firestore existed developers had only one option to use which was firebase real time database fine now similar to cloud firestore real time database is also a cloud based no sql database and it solves all the problems which cloud firestore used to solve but the major difference between these two databases comes when we compare how the data is stored within these two databases so earlier we saw that data in firestore is stored in the form of documents and collections but in case of real time database the data is stored as json objects so this is a sample example of a json object with nested json objects this is the root users node and it further contains data for each user such as user1 user2 and so on now the question arises is this data format more efficient compared to the way we store data in firestore well the answer is no because one of the major disadvantages of using real time database over cloud firestore is that suppose you want to fetch user1 object well in that case along with user1 you will get all the deep nested json objects as well such as you will get name phone mobile home and so on which makes our query process quite slow if you have too many nested json objects but in case of firestore suppose if you fetch a single document then you are going to get only that document you will not get all the sub collections to which it points to so this makes cloud firestore fast and efficient compared to real time database so if you are starting a new project then google recommends you to give preference to cloud firestore over real time database fine so please note that always give preference to cloud firestore while starting a new project and if you want to explore more on the key differences between these two databases in terms of performance efficiency and scalability then there is a dedicated web page on the official website of firebase documentation which talks about it in detail you can just give it a flat reading before you decide on which database you want to choose and why trust me this document will answer all of your queries next in sequence is the cloud storage so let us get a big picture of what is firebase cloud storage well as the name implies 
Cloud storage is a cloud-based storage where we can store files in a storage bucket and access them whenever required. The files could be any photos, videos or any type of file you can think of. So let us explore the capabilities of this Firebase product. Well, uploading and downloading of a file using cloud storage is really quick and easy. Because even if there is a network failure during the process, then the file upload or download process is immediately paused and resumed when the device gets back the proper network connection. Well, if you delete a file, then you can even allow a user to restore it. Accessing a file stored in the cloud storage is really quick and easy because the files that are stored in the cloud storage in exactly the same way the files are stored in a local hard disk. Fine. And if you have a very large number of files, then using Android List API, you can even apply pagination. Quite simple, isn't it? And all of these are possible by just adding a few lines of code in your application, which means instead of spending time on handling a file or handling the errors, you can spend more time building your own application. Now, apart from these, cloud storage by default provides strong security to your stored files. And if the number of files increases, then you can easily scale your storage. And the best part is it uses the same infrastructure that is used by most popular applications like Spotify and Google Photos. Moreover, you can even trigger the code written in your own backend server by integrating cloud functions with cloud storage. Now, this cloud functions is another Firebase product. So, let us explore the last part of this section, which is cloud functions. So, what exactly is Firebase cloud functions? Well, I will explain what is cloud functions with a simple and sweet example. So let us understand what is it. So in this example, I will show you what is the role of cloud functions to greet a user with a welcome message when the user logs in for the first time. Now, suppose you have created an application where the user tries to log in for the first time. Well, in that case, you might want to send an email to the user with a welcome message, right? So once the user is authenticated using Firebase authentication, then in your Firebase console, an event is triggered. And when this Firebase event is triggered, then you can actually catch this event and based on this event, trigger a piece of code which you will write in Cloud Functions. And this Cloud Functions will be responsible to send an email to the user with a welcome note. Sounds quite simple, isn't it? So the purpose of cloud functions is to execute a code written by you to do something in response to any generated Firebase event. So within this cloud functions, we basically write our code. Fine, please remember that. Now, let us take another example. Suppose the user updates his hobbies or interest in your application which will be stored, of course, in the Cloud Firestore database. So, based on this database update event, an event will be triggered in your Firebase, right? So then, you can catch this event and trigger a function within Cloud Functions. And this Cloud Functions, in return, will send a push notification to the user using another Firebase feature, such as Firebase cloud messaging, abbreviated as FCM. So this way a user will receive a notification based on his updated interest or hobbies. So there is a higher chance for the user that he will click on that notification. So to summarize, you can assume cloud functions as a place where you can write some code which will be executed automatically based on a certain Firebase event. And this event could be based on any Firebase feature, 
such as the event could be triggered by Firebase Authentication, Cloud Firestore, and so on. And the code which you will write to perform any task inside the cloud functions will be stored in Google's cloud in a very very secured way. So in this way, you will get a secured serverless experience using cloud functions. And within the cloud functions, you can write code by using JavaScript or TypeScript. So if you have some experience with either of these two languages, then it's fine. Otherwise, you might need to hire someone to do the job. So yes, that's all for this cloud functions. So in this way, we have reached the end of this section. So in this section, we explored Firebase products that will help you to develop your application economically in very very less time and effort. We first explored Firebase Authentication, then explored databases like Cloud Firestore and Real-Time Database. And we came to a conclusion that if you are starting a new project, then you should prefer using Cloud Firestore. Then we explored cloud storage, which is capable to store any type of file that you want to store. And finally, we explored how cloud functions provides you with a serverless experience to execute your backend code without having to actually create your own backend server. So yes, that's all for this section. Okay, so until now we saw the Firebase features which helps you to create high quality applications. But once you create your application, then it becomes very important to constantly improve your application's performance as well as its quality. So moving on to the next section, we will explore those Firebase products which will help you to improve the quality of your application. So firstly, we will start our discussion with Firebase Crashlytics. Then we will explore Firebase Performance Monitoring. And finally, we will explore the Firebase Test Lab. So let's get started. When you create any application, then it is natural that your application might crash due to some reason. It might be due to some unknown bugs present in your application. And as a developer, it is your responsibility to fix that bug as soon as possible. So for this purpose, Firebase provides a product known as Crashlytics. So Crashlytics is basically a real-time crash reporter that helps you to track bugs in your application, analyze them and therefore fix them. So stability of your application plays a key role in determining the success of your application. Bugs in your application can compel the user to uninstall your application, leave a poor rating in the Play Store, share negative reviews on their social network, and would ultimately make the users unhappy. And at the same time, it is practically impossible to keep track of those bugs manually on your own. So for this purpose, here comes Firebase Crashlytics to the rescue. The moment you integrate Crashlytics in your application, then this tool will analyze all the bugs, generate a bug report, and send it back to you. And then using a Firebase console, you can start analyzing the bug report so received. Now, this Firebase console is like a dashboard, where you are allowed to read all the bug reports. Don't worry, I will show it to you at the end of this course how this Firebase console looks like. So right now, don't worry about it. Next, using Crashlytics, you can group similar kinds of bugs together for your better understanding. For example, there might be a few crashes that had occurred while watching videos in your application. Or there might be crashes when users were sharing messages to the external applications. So in this way, you have the flexibility to organize similar kind of bugs all together and analyze those bug reports collectively in your Firebase console and hence therefore fix them. Next, Crashlytics provides real-time alerts as well. So in your Firebase console, you can set a threshold limit for a particular type of crash. 
and if the number of crashes exceeds your defined threshold limit, then Crashlytics will automatically send an email to your team. And hence, that bug can be treated on an urgent basis. Again, sounds amazing, right? Next, using Crashlytics is super easy. The moment you add Gradle dependency in your project, it will start sending bug reports to your Firebase console. And then you can immediately start tracking, analyzing, and fix potential bugs in your application. How cool is that? So yes, that's all for Crashlytics. Next in sequence is the Firebase Performance Monitoring. Well, this feature is quite similar to I will say Crashlytics. But instead, it will help you to monitor the performance of your application. So basically, this product will help you to gain insight into the performance characteristics of your application. So let us understand its usage with an example. Suppose, due to some reason, downloading a file from your server might take a lot of time. Despite having everything okay in your server, there might be situations where such operations could be timed out. So this will result in poor user experience, right? The reason could be anything, but probably the reason could be the poor network at the user's end. So we cannot assume that the user must be having a high-speed 4G network. He might be on poor Wi-Fi, 2G or even poor 3G network. So in such a case, we cannot blame ourselves because such things are beyond our control sometimes. But yes, using performance monitoring, we can collect such information from the user and accordingly make our application compatible with different kinds of network. Fine. Similar to this, there could be hundreds of scenarios where you need to monitor your application performance, such as how your application performs in the background, how it behaves in different Android versions, what is the average startup time of your application, and even you can monitor the time taken for each HTTP transaction. And of course, many more things you can do using this performance monitoring tool. And these are all possible by just integrating performance monitoring SDK in your application, which means you really don't have to write a single line of code to monitor different parts of your application. Just integrate the SDK and you are done. How cool is that? So once the performance monitoring will collect data, then in your Firebase console, you will be provided with a performance monitoring dashboard, which will help you to analyze the collected data from all over the world. You can analyze data based on country, device type, app version, and even you can create your own custom category to analyze the collected data. Fine. So I hope you understood the purpose of this Firebase product. Now coming to the last part of this section, which is Firebase Test Lab. So let's talk about it as well. So firstly, let's check out what problem does it solve? Well, the Android ecosystem has a variety of devices. Each device has its own unique specification. The devices differ in screen size, screen resolution, density, and many more, such as different hardware, Android version, and so on. So the major challenge that developers face is to test their application on a wide range of devices, which is practically sometimes becomes impossible. So here comes Firebase Test Lab into the picture. Well, Firebase Test Lab basically provides cloud-based app testing infrastructure. And using this test lab, you can test your application on real devices. Well, by real devices, I am referring to actual Android devices that are hosted in Google data centers. And you can access those devices by just a click of few buttons from your home. So once you test your application in those devices, you can analyze the test results such as check the logs, 
explore how your application looks like on different devices with different configurations by looking at the screenshots. While testing your application, if your application crashes on some devices, then you will even get the crash report, which you can analyze and therefore fix any bugs present in your application. You can even test your application on different languages as well. Fine, and all of these are possible by just following three simple steps. The first step is to create an application and write your test cases. Now, writing test cases in Android application such as instrumentation test is really time taking. So, in your test lab, you can instead run the robo test. Well, this robo test will automate the testing process. So, you don't have to write a single line of code for that. So, this makes our testing process quite simple. Next, in your Firebase console, you can define your test, such as you can select on which devices you want to test your application. You can select the OS version, locales, and even the screen orientation. So basically, you can customize your test as per your requirement. So once you decide your testing scenarios, the next step will be to run the test and analyze the results. And trust me, it is super easy to do that. So I hope you got an idea of what exactly is Firebase Test Lab. So in this section, we basically explored various Firebase features using which we can improve our application's quality. We started our discussion with Firebase Crashlytics, which is quite a handy tool to analyze crash reports in real time and therefore fix bugs as required. Then we explored the Firebase Performance Monitoring feature, which is used to analyze how your application is performing while users all over the world are using it. And finally, we saw the importance of Test Lab that lets you test your application before deploying it. So, yes, that's pretty much it for this section. Now, so far in this course, we have explored Firebase products that will help you to develop an application and how to improve its quality. So now it is time to dive into the next section of this course that is how to earn money from our applications by increasing the user base and the user engagement. So let us dive into the next section of this course. Well, the core objective of this section is to explore Firebase products which will help us to increase the user experience, grow the user base and user engagement and therefore make a lot of money. So, we will explore various Firebase services such as cloud messaging, in-app messaging, remote config, Google Analytics for Firebase, predictions, Firebase AB testing, dynamic links, and last but not least, Firebase App Indexing. So let us start our discussion with Firebase Cloud Messaging. Well, we all know that notifications are the simplest way to increase the user engagement. So Firebase provides us with a product known as Firebase Cloud Messaging, abbreviated as FCM. So FCM is basically a cross-platform messaging solution. That is, you can send notifications to the app user with just one click of a button across different platforms. So now, how does FCM works? Let's take a look at it. So with FCM, you will get a GUI interface where you can compose your notification with the help of just a few clicks of button. Then, using FCM channel, you can send notification to your target devices. So, sending notifications was never so easy before. And you can even have your own server set up. Such as using cloud functions, you can trigger a function that will send message requests to the FCM backend, which will then take the request further to the client devices via FCM channel. 
Quite simple, isn't it? So now, let us explore the capabilities of FCM. So using FCM, you can send a notification, which could be a reminder, a promotional offer, chat messages, or any kind of message that you want to send. Next, using FCM, you can send notification in three different ways. You can send a notification to a single device or even to a group of devices. You can also send notification to devices subscribed to specific topics. For example, if you have created a news application, then you can send news updates in the form of notifications as per the user's interest. So that way you can drive maximum user engagement. Next, you can even allow a client application to send a message back to your server via an FCM channel. So basically you can take advantage of the two-way communication from the server to the user and back from the user to the server. Nice and simple. And trust me, if you use FCM in your application, then it is going to make your job very very easy to drive user engagement. So yes, that's all about FCM in Android for now. Now, similar to FCM, there exists a Firebase product known as In-App Messaging. Well, FCM and In-App Messaging are two different things, but they both help to increase the user engagement. So I thought it is better to discuss about it right now just after FCM. Now, the difference between in-app messaging and FCM is that the in-app messaging is only useful when the user is actively using the application. That is, when the application is currently active in the foreground, then only you can push the in-app messages to the user. So, let us understand how does it work with the help of a simple example. Suppose if a user is playing a game and he is unable to cross a particular level, let us assume that. Then using in-app messaging, you can send an in-app message to the user, such as unlock the level by paying a few bucks. So this way you can increase your revenue. Then suppose if a user is frequently using your application, so in such a case, you can prompt the user to rate your application in the Play Store. And a good review in the Play Store would eventually help you to grow your business, isn't it? So in similar way, you can offer more coupons to the user dynamically and give them attractive discounts. If they have any items in their shopping cart, then you can give them a promotional coupon so that they will make a purchase before the coupon gets expired. Also, you can show information such as upcoming sales or even greet the user with some message when they open the application. So in short, you can do anything you feel is good to make your app engaging. So now, how do we use this awesome Firebase feature of in-app messaging? Well, for that, first you need to integrate the in-app messaging SDK into your project. Then in the Firebase console, you can design the layout of your message. That is, how your message dialog will look like in the user's application. And then you can select your target users. And finally, send the message. Now next. In your Firebase console, you can track your message performance as well, such as how many users actually clicked on the message or how many users performed an in-app purchase that increased your revenue. So based on this performance report, you can frame your next message and repeat the same cycle again with more efficiency. Quite simple, isn't it? And trust me, using FCM and in-app messaging, are a great choices to increase your user engagement and therefore increase your revenue. So yes, that's all for FCM and in-app messaging. Now moving on, the next Firebase product which I'm going to talk about is Firebase Remote Config. 
So what exactly is meant by remote config? Let us understand it by exploring what problem does it actually solve. So suppose you have launched the first version of your application in the Play Store. But all of a sudden you discover that a small text which you have used in your application is offensive to some users residing in Asia. But at the same time, that text is okay for the users residing in other parts of the world. So as a result, a certain group of users are going to either uninstall your application or leave a bad review in the Play Store, right? So as a solution in response, you would release the version 2 of your application in the Play Store, right? But by the time the new version would reach the users, it would be too late, isn't it? So here comes Firebase Remote Config to the rescue. So what you saw in the first case is basically the traditional approach. But if you use the Firebase Remote Config, then you won't require to release the version 2 of your application in the Play Store again. Because your application in case of using Remote Config will be in sync with Google Cloud Server. So if you want to change the text of your application, then you can just change the text in the Google Cloud and your application will automatically sync the updates automatically in real time. Like this. So in this way, you don't have to release the second version of your application. And later, if you decide to change the text again, then using just a few clicks, you can update the text in your server and the changes will be reflected in your application instantly. How cool is that? Now, you can also use remote config to change the theme of your application. For example, this is how your application looks like for the general users. But for premium customers who have done a lot of in-app purchases, you can change the theme and colors of your application just to make them feel special. And you do that by just changing a few values in your cloud server using Firebase console. Just a few clicks and you are done. Nice and simple. So I hope I have made you understand what exactly is the role of Firebase product remote config. So yes, that's all about remote config. Next in sequence is Google Analytics and Predictions. Well, we will explore both of them one by one but also together because they work closely in conjunction with one another. So let us start with exploring Google Analytics. So as the name implies, Google Analytics basically helps you to analyze the behavior of your application user. It just collects the data and lets you analyze them in the Firebase console so that you can take next steps to grow your product. So let us explore analytics in the context of an Android application. How helpful this product is? Well, analytics will give you the number of active users using your application, how much they spend time on your application, and how regularly they use your app. And most importantly, it will let you know which country they belong to or what is their age group and so on and so forth. As soon as you integrate analytics into your application, it will automatically start sending you data, which you can analyze in Firebase console. And by default, it sends you the basic report. But if you want some specific reports that are helpful for your business, then you can even customize your reporting by adding a few lines of code in your application. Fine. For example, if you are creating a selfie application, then you might want to know which camera filter is mostly used by your user and which the least. Then accordingly, you can add or remove features that suits your audience. Makes sense, isn't it? So this way you can always make informed decisions for your application which will eventually play a role in the success of your product. 
Now, Google Analytics has a lot more to offer. I have just shown you a glimpse of what it can do for you. Now moving on, what about this predictions? Which is another Firebase product for Android. So let us get a big picture of this product as well. Well, the whole idea of Firebase predictions is to just predict the future. It basically uses machine learning technology to analyze the past behavior of a user and then predict the future behavior of the user. Of course, it cannot give you 100% guaranteed result. But yes, it can help you a lot to a particular extent. Sounds simple, isn't it? So, how does this predictions actually work? Well, first, using Google Analytics, you need to collect data regarding the user behavior. Such as how the user is actually behaving while using your application. Next, in your Firebase console, you need to enable Firebase predictions for your application. Once you enable it, it will automatically start analyzing the data collected by Google Analytics. And finally, you can see those predicted results. You can then analyze it and accordingly make decisions for your application in future. Fine. To conclude, Google Analytics and predictions will work together and will guide you to take necessary steps for your application. So yes, that's all for these two products. Next in sequence is the Firebase A-B testing. So let us get a big picture of what is Firebase A-B testing. Well, as a developer, it is quite a challenge to decide on the new features for your application. A new feature might be the placement of a button in your application, kind of notification or email that you are sending, adding new levels in your game application, and so on. And in such a case, it is very difficult to decide what is good or bad for your application as a new feature. Also, once you release a new app version in the Play Store, then rolling it back doesn't leave a good impression. So, let us understand how A-B testing helps you make better decisions for your application with the help of a demo scenario. Suppose, you have created an application where a user can give thumbs up to a post. But over time, using analytics and predictions, you found that though your user base is increasing, the number of overall likes is decreasing, which means people might be losing interest in your application. To revive your application, you decided to add a heart icon along with other emojis which users can use in addition to the old thumbs up. But as a developer, you are not sure if this feature will increase the user engagement or not. So here comes A-B testing to the rescue. So using A-B testing, you can publish the new feature to just small group of users, maybe just in one country, and then check if this feature is helping you to increase the user engagement or not. If it works in a positive way, then you can push this new feature to the users residing in other parts of the world. And in case if this new feature doesn't work, then you can of course roll back the updates from the small group of user. Right? So I hope this example gave you a gist of what is the purpose of Firebase A-B testing. Just test a new feature on a small group of people, check people's response, and then if it is positive, then push it to other group of people. Quite simple, isn't it? The next Firebase product which I want to talk about is Dynamic Links. So what exactly is Dynamic Links and how does it work? Well, Dynamic Links is nothing but special clickable links. And if you create a Dynamic Link, then the same link will work across all the platforms such as Android, iOS or Web. So let us understand it with the help of an example. Suppose for your application you have shared a 
promotional message on social media and that message contains a dynamic link and this link will take user to the promotional page in your anod application where the users can avail the offer fine so if an app user clicks on that link then on his android device your application will automatically launch the promotional page in front of him such as buying pizza at a discounted rate so this is the basic use of dynamic links the user clicks on the link and the relevant page on your application opens up now the dynamic link looks like any other regular link but they are created by firebase dynamic links and they contain some hidden information which is understandable by only your application fine now moving on there might be a situation where your application is not installed in the user's device so in that case if the user clicks on this link then he will be taken to the google play store from where he can download the application and after installation when the application is opened for the first time then he won't see the home screen of your application instead the application is going to display the promotional page to the user directly so this is the beauty of using dynamic links so here in this example this also shows that the information in the dynamic link was not lost until the final action was performed by the user how cool is that now it is not necessary that the user could be using an android device well he could be using an ios device or a desktop browser so if the user clicks on this link on his ios device then it will open the native ios application in his device if the app is installed or if the user clicks on the link on his web browser then he will be taken to the offer page on your website so this means that one dynamic link would work across all the platforms pretty awesome isn't it now to use this feature all you have to do is you need to first integrate dynamic link sdk in your project by just adding the gradle dependency next in your firebase console you can create dynamic links then if your application opens up using dynamic links then you need to write some code in your application to handle that dynamic links and take actions as required then finally in your firebase console you can explore how your dynamic links are performing so yes using this simple example i just showed you a big picture of how and why there is a need for using dynamic links in android so yes that's all for this product now before i end this section i would like to talk about a last firebase feature of this category known as app indexing so what exactly is app indexing well this product is nothing but it will make your application content visible on google search so when a user is looking for something on google and if your application contains the relevant content then google will automatically show your application content in the search result and if the user clicks on that result then your application will launch automatically in his device showing user the relevant content fine so this way you can gain additional traffic to your application so i guess for app indexing we have nothing more to say about so finally we have reached the end of this section so this was a pretty interesting section where we learned about firebase products that helps you to ultimately grow your business we started with messaging solution such as cloud messaging and in app messaging then we explored remote config which dynamically changes the content of the application directly from firebase console then we saw the importance of google analytics and predictions to analyze and predict the user behavior then we saw ab testing which 
let's you test a new feature with a small group of people before releasing it worldwide. Next, we explore the importance of dynamic links and also app indexing. So yes, that's pretty much it for this section. I hope you have now an idea of so many Firebase features that helps you grow your business. So moving on, we have reached the last section of this course. That is, in this section, we will learn how to connect our application with Firebase. So for this demo, you should have Android Studio installed in your system with an emulator up and running. And I am sure if you are from Android background, then you must be having these two setups. But if you are from non-Android background, then for now you can just watch this video and later on set up Android Studio along with emulator. So let's get started. So the first thing that you need to do is launch your Android Studio and then create a new project. Select empty activity. Let us give the name of the application as Android Firebase. And this is our package name. Now make sure that in your case, the application package name is different from that of mine. To make it different, you can just replace Shriyank by your own name so as to avoid any conflict. Otherwise, your project won't get registered. Select Kotlin as language and then click on finish. And also you should set up a device or emulator where you will run your application. So next, go to the Firebase console. You will get to this link by just typing Firebase on Google search. Once you land on this page, click on sign in on the top right. Just log in using your Google account. Once you sign in from the top right corner of the screen, you will find go to console option. Click on it. So this is how the Firebase console looks like. So from here, I will create a new project. And give the project name as Android Firebase. You can give the name of your own choice. It will automatically generate a unique project ID for you. Click on continue. Make sure this Google Analytics is enabled for this project. Then click on continue. Select an account. Just use the default account. And then again create the project. It will take some time to create your new project. Once your project is ready, click on continue. So this is how your Firebase console looks like. So our next step will be to link our Android application that we just created using the Android Studio with the project that we just created in our Firebase console. Since we are dealing with the Android project, so just click on this Android icon over here. And then you need to paste your application package name. So go back to Android Studio and from here at the top, copy this package name. Come back and paste it over here. You can provide the nickname to your own project such as My Android Firebase. First tap. Then click on Register Application. Next. You need to download this JSON file and add it to your project. Well, this file contains configurations for your Firebase Android project. Once you download the file, then within your Android Studio from the Project Explorer, switch to Project View. Then expand your project and within this app folder, just paste that file. Keep the file name as googleservices.json And again, make sure to verify this file is actually present within this app folder. Once you verify it, switch back to Android View. Then come back to your Firebase console. Click on Next. 
and then we need to configure our project with these dependencies. So first what I will do is I will just copy this statement from here. Go back to the Android Studio and here within Gradle script go to project level Gradle file and over here within dependencies just paste that statement. And also make sure within repositories you must have this Google's Maven repository statement. If it is not added over here then please add it. And also copy this all projects. Move back and paste it over here right after the build script. And remove these three dots like this. Again come back to the console. And from the bottom, just select Kotlin since we are using Kotlin as our language. Now copy these dependencies from here. And within your Android Studio from this Gradle scripts, open this module level Gradle file. Then scroll down a little bit under dependencies, just paste those two dependencies over here. Like this. And again, copy these two plugins. And at the top, since the first one is already present over here, just paste the second one. And make sure you just format it in the way it is present over here, like this. So I will just replace this statement by ID. Perfect. Now also note that the version of these two dependencies might vary in your case depending on the time you are watching this video. So if it is different for you then please don't worry about it. Just paste the statement as it is mentioned in your Firebase console. And once you are done, just sync your project. And I think we have some error within our project level Gradle file. As per the documentation, this code should be here. But as per our latest Android Studio, this code should not be here. So I will just remove it. If the error occurs at your end as well, then just remove this code. And again try to sync your project. I think they should update their documentation. Yes, so things are perfect. So once you are done, go to the Firebase console and at the bottom click on next. And finally continue to console. So here this is our project added to our Firebase console. And now from your Android Studio, you can now run the application. So here our application is now up and running in our emulator. So as soon as you run the application, this application will start sending data to your Firebase console, which I will show you shortly. Now coming back to the Firebase console, here, the Firebase Analytics has already started collecting data from our application. Since my application is installed in only one device yet, so it shows active users as one. Now in your case, if this analytics data is not showing yet, then just wait for an hour or two before it gets updated. For me, it took almost an hour to update. If you go into analytics, a dashboard will open up. Here you will find all the details of your application user such as what is the average engagement time, which version of application is successfully installed by the user, then how many times the user has viewed your screen, how many times it has been opened for the first time and so on. And I am from India, so it shows only one user from India. So you can track anything, everything using Google Analytics. Coming back to the console. Similar to Analytics, if you have integrated other Firebase products like Authentication or Crashlytics, then data related to those products will show up over here. Fine. And on the left, you will find all the Firebase products which we saw in this course. If you expand build, you will get products like authentication, databases, storage and so on. 
Similarly, under Release and Monitor, you will find features that will help you to improve the application's quality. Then we have Google Analytics, which we just saw over here. And finally, we have Engage. Under this, we have products to increase the user engagement, such as predictions, A-B testing, FCM, in-app messaging, and so on. So yes, overall, this is how your Firebase console looks like. And trust me, this console is super easy to use. Let us explore how much Firebase services cost if you try it for your business. So from over here, go to Usage and Billing. Well, right now we are on the Spark plan, which is totally free of cost. So let us go to the paid one. From details and settings, click on see all plans. So here we go, right now we are having the Spark plan which is totally free. But the paid one is the Blaze plan which is pay as you go plan. That is the billing will depend on how much you use the Firebase services. Now most of the Firebase products are actually free. For example, A-B testing, analytics, app distribution, app indexing, these are the free Firebase services. As you move down, you will find the pricing for Authentication, Cloud Firestore, then we have the paid plan for Cloud Function. Next, we have FCM, Crashlytics and Dynamic Links as a totally free Firebase services. So as you scroll down, you will find how much Firebase services will cost you for your business. Most of them are free, but those Firebase services which requires backend server spaces will cost you a little bit. And the good thing is, the Firebase products and services that are not free comes with a reasonable pricing. And this is another reason you must try Firebase for your business. So in the end, let us see how Firebase has helped a lot of companies all over the world to grow themselves. So Firebase is doing wonders for popular applications all over the world. For example, Applications like Hotstar have increased user engagement by 38% and have decreased app startup time by 63% by using features like A-B testing, remote config, crashlytics and Firebase performance. Next, applications like Spotify and Google Photos are using Firebase cloud storage infrastructure. Fabulous, which is a health and fitness application, has doubled its user retention by customizing its onboarding process by using Firebase authentication. The OneFootball application has increased its user session by 5% by using features like Firebase Remote Config and Google Analytics. Well, there are various other brands that trust Firebase for their business. The list is long but the time is limited. So if you want to know how popular brands are using Firebase for their business, then you must visit Firebase website. And at the top, you will find the Use Cases tab. Under this, you will find a large number of companies that are using Firebase to grow their business. You can read the testimonies of each companies as per your wish. So I hope you enjoyed this course. So how did you find this course? Please let me know in the comment section below. And of course, if you are new to my channel, then do subscribe to my channel. This is Shreng Siddharth signing off and before you sign off, please give this video a big thumbs up. Bye.